Okay, I'd like to welcome everybody to the Wednesday, February 22nd, 2023 meeting of the Fall River Redevelopment Authority. A recording of the open session can be viewed on all Fall, uh, Fall River Government Television, www.frgtv.us. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, pursuant to the open meeting law, any person may make an audio or video recording this public meeting or may transmit the meeting through any medium. Attendees are therefore advised that such recording and transmission are being made, whether perceived or unperceived, by those present and are deemed acknowledgeable, excuse me, acknowledged and permissible. Uh, we're going to do a roll call. Um, Johnny Erickson. Louis Gonzalez. Joan Veneris. Ann Keene. Okay. Also participating are Sarah Page, our Executive Director, John Coughlin, Council, Ken Fiola. Administrative Services Consultant, and we want to welcome Karen Martin, our new project coordinator and executive assistant. Who I know you may not have met her. Have you met Karen before? No, I just tonight. Today, today, yeah. Today, mm -hmm. yeah. So uh, welcome. Thank board. you. Um, the first thing we have to do is we have an election tonight, and uh, I need to entertain a motion uh, for the position of chair. I nominate John Erickson as chair for the. Development Authority Board. Second. Second, yeah. Okay. You want to take a vote one at a time, or do you want to do them all at once? You'll vote each position, or you can do a nomination for all and then take a vote for all at once. You can do whatever you want. Well, we already got one out of three done. So you want to just vote on that one? Yeah. Uh, I'll entertain a motion for the position of vice chair. <laughs> I nominate Ian Keene as vice chair for the Burger Redevelopment Authority Board. Second. Third. Uh, I need an, a motion, for, uh, excuse me, uh, entertain a motion for the position of treasurer. Second. Okay. <laughs> we'll do one vote at the end. Yeah, we'll, keep going. Order. we'll do one vote at the end. And also, um, we have the position of ex officio secretary, which, uh, do we know who that is? I don't know that you need to vote. Oh, we don't need it to vote. Okay. Okay. I think position. I would just add it to the vote. Okay. Just add it for a Okay. 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 Yeah. Yep. So, um, so, Sarah, did, did somebody nominate Sarah? Uh, I'll, I'll nominate Sarah Page for ex officio secretary. Second. So why don't we do a roll call vote to make those four appointments? Okay, we need a roll call vote to uh, make all those appointments. John Erickson, yes. John Medeiros, yes. Louis Gonzalez, yes. And Keene, yes. Okay, we're good. Okay. Um, it's too bad we don't have Ron, but anyway, hopefully he'll, he'll get here. Uh, <clears throat> Uh, we have to do an approval of the open session meeting minutes from January 25th, 22nd. Are there any comments on the meetings, on the meeting notes, no. rather? Uh, I need a motion to approve the open session minutes. Motion to approve the minutes from January 25th, 22, uh, 2022. No, 2023. 23. Yeah. Second. Second, yeah. Okay, roll call. Johnny Erickson, yes. John Medeiros, yes. Louis Gonzalez, yes. Ian Keene, yes. Okay. Need to approve the warrant, which I think you all have. Which totals $315,531.87. And you're good with that, Joan? Yes. And I had signed off on it. Yeah. Okay. Um, so I need a motion to approve this warrant. Second. Uh, okay, John Erickson, yes. Joan Medeiros, yes. Louis Gonzalez, yes. Ann Keene, yes. Uh, finance report. Completion of the 2020 uh, 2021 audit. Uh, who wants to speak to that? I will. I, I, Sarah and I met with our audit firm uh, last week. Uh, this is not now. They have completed our audits for 2020 and 2021. <coughs> uh, 2022 audit so I, I think we're in great 
good shape finally and, and have put this all to bed. Um, the second order of business that we have is to vote on a bank resolution to reflect the new composition of our board. So I would like to entertain a motion on a corporate authority resolution designation for all five members of the board as signatories on the primary account held by the former redevelopment authority, the Bay Coast Bank, and the signatures required for certain financial transactions. Second. Do we need to make yes, a motion? Yes, okay, yes, I'll, yes. I, uh, I move we entertain a motion to on a corporate authorization resolution to designate all five members of the board signatories on the primary account held by Fall River Development Authority with Bay Coast Bank and the signatures required for certain financial transactions. A second. Uh, do we need a roll call for that, John? Yeah. Uh, John Erickson, yes. John Medeiros, yes. Louis Gonzalez, yes. Okay. Ann Keen, yes. Okay. Uh, I'm going to again introduce um, our new project coordinator, executive assistant Karen Martin. And uh, we next we're going to move on to uh, project updates. Uh, City Pier, Sarah, do you want to talk to the uh, doc, the latest on the doc system? Sure. <clears throat> so I was talking with Johnny about this. Ken and Karen and I were on with our um, design firm uh, yesterday, and um, we're still somewhat uncertain exactly what materials to use for the docks and we got news that they were thinking that it was going to take so long to um, uh, to order all the materials once a contractor is selected that we might not get the docks in until sometime in August which is totally unacceptable given that we're trying to get it in for this year's boating season. And so we're working on that to try to um, figure out other strategies so that we can get the docks in sooner. And so um, I think there's some level of frustration here and we're gonna try to get to the bottom of this. Okay. okay. Um, <clears throat> We need, do we need to put out an RFP for landscaping and snow removal? Yeah, we have to, and because there was no snow this year and they haven't had to go out, we, we thought that we would have really maxed out our allowable um, payments by now. Um, you know, we, we need to go out to RFP at some point, but we may be able to put that off for another month or two. And, um, we're going out to RFP for numerous things soon, so we might just do that in May or, you know, I had thought we would have to do it by now given uh, that we thought we were opening it earlier and so we would have had more landscape costs and then we thought we'd have snow costs, which we really haven't, so, um, so that's just letting you know we may be able to wait a little longer on that. It may seem late though. Because if we're going to go to RFP in May, that means we probably won't have anybody until June or July. Right, but I guess the thing is that we hired, we did um, a good business practices and looked at a number of people and hired someone who we can pay up to $10,000 in this contract period. And we've gotten nowhere near $10,000. We've spent maybe... 1500 or something okay. so that would allow us a little more time but if we were trying to put it out so that you know we RFP'd for this entire spring summer season yes we would need to you know have it out now but Sarah, how much what's the ballpark do you think on, on how much it <coughs> he gave us ranges well, he gave us all these amounts for particular services, it was event, but like event-based, the snow anyway. The only reason I ask that is because you you really truly only have to do a full RFP if we're over fifty thousand for the year. Oh, for a un, year. Under well, if you do a one year at a time contract. Right. So, if it's under fifty, we can do three written quotes. It's a quicker process than a full RFP. Right. So it just depends on the dollar amount. So take a look and come up with an estimate. But if right. we're 
If we it's going to be grand, under fifty thousand a year for sure. So then we can do three written quotes, and that's okay. It. Yeah. Okay. It would be a lot quicker. So and I think all he did was the initial cleanup, right? The land, the. the he did oh, two. two. He did a two? prep for winter <coughs> and a big cleanup okay. before our grand opening. Right. Um, but still, I think it was under two thousand. Do, so. do you recall? Did we get billed for that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. We did. Uh -huh. Okay. Yeah. All right. Good. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> next item is uh, the um, <clears throat> the what. The, do you want to talk about that? Sure. The Massachusetts Office of Travel and Tourism grant. And it was brought to our attention by Patty Rigo, who suggested that um, the new grant writer for the city, Jasmine, could write a proposal for us. Pat she invited Patrick and me and Jasmine to meet and talk about opportunities. And I sent her. Um, one suggestion. So we have lots of suggestions floating around, and the grant is due at some point in March, I believe, before our next board meeting. So I hope to have a real solid proposal for you, but we're kind of not finding agreement on what we should do. What I suggested in response to Patty's um, <coughs> you know, email to me was maybe we should, uh, oh, so you can ask for up to 250000 It's a capital grant, and so you have to be, um, but I think you can ask up to 50000 up to 50000 if you want to do a study. So Patty's real proposal is that we do a feasibility study for what we might want to buy to enhance City Pier to make it more um, usable for events. You know, one of her desires are bathrooms, and I told her I did not think we were uh, going to want to maintain bathrooms. The city itself is not wanting to maintain bathrooms, even though they have them along the waterfront. So. Um, you know, she wondered if we would want to put big shade structures, um, which, you know, we had wanted shade structures originally, but she was proposing that a feasibility analysis might look at big sails that would uh, be placed across the, um, the uh, lamp posts, but the question there is whether in this high velocity zone you could do that. So almost any feasibility analysis will have to look at all kinds of, um, uh, you know, constraints of this site when we all know there are many. So um, then I suggested we buy, we asked for money to buy a tent that we could put up for all or parts of the season. And she didn't like that idea because she said most vendors will bring their own tents and um, she just didn't think that was a great idea. And then um, Ken suggested a temporary stage and we've talked with Patrick about that, and Patrick feels that um, the Narrows feels really comfortable with what they do, which is rent them because you it's, it comes insured, it comes with a driver who'll drop it off and pick it up. And um, he thinks if we were going to get a stage, you would want the city to own it and you know, it could be driven from neighborhood to neighborhood, but um, he's not really that in favor of that idea, which seems surprising. He did say it would save the Narrows money, but that somebody has to take responsibility for driving it, insuring it, and he wasn't envisioning that it just sit on um, City Pier. When I heard of a stage, I thought they meant what Eric had originally designed, which was some kind of platform that would just raise the performer up a little bit, not in an elaborate open up um, into a big stage. 
So we have lots of ideas floating around. We need to make a decision quickly. Uh, I think Ken and I both feel like we have a zillion studies going on right now, and Ken's view was let's get a real, you know, let's do things, let's get a stage out there. But Patrick feels that for, at least for this first year, he's happily going to do a few concerts and just rent a stage. Well, Ken, you said there was a deadline for March, but we would would we have another opportunity? I don't at some think point? that I think the deadline is mid March, so I don't think we'd really have another opportunity to bring it back. Ever? Oh no, I mean it's oh. due this March. You oh. could apply next year. You oh, know, it's so kind it's of a year. yearly grant, okay. and it just came up after the last board meeting. So, um, you know. It's the kind of thing, if there were just the perfect idea and proposal, we could just crank it out and apply. But the other thing is it needs to be matched, and the city can't match it with ARPA funds. So, you know, they were saying, would the board match? And I said, I bet the board might be happy to match something if it was an idea that really <laughs> made sense to well, us. Well, I think it's hard with city peer untested at this yeah. point. We really don't know what our right. capital needs are. That, right. That's the big part of the problem. Well, and Patty's view was, you know, we'd be having events this summer and you could have somebody out there looking at what's working and what's not working and, you know, then you'd be ready to install it for the next season. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I can see the argument that in your first year of having things, you could see what works, what doesn't work, what problems arise. And that it could make sense to do a feasibility study, but I think we're all focused on getting things to happen out there mm -hmm. this summer. So, what do people think? So, can what do kind you, of things can you use the money for? Is it a particular? It has to be capital costs or something like a feasibility study that okay. would lead to a capital um, commitment, I think. Okay. I'm just not sure what they're going to study. Oop, sorry. Study how well concerts do, or study how well fairs do. I don't know. Well, you know, you could study that everybody's little pop up tent got blown away and that, you know, you need something more coherent to hold them all down. Or, yeah, I mean, you that's going to kind of work itself out, though, for, for yeah. right? I mean, we're kind of walking before we run. Right. Like so, Joan said, it's you know, we're gonna, it's almost like we have to see how it goes and then what the interest is, right? In yeah. it. I mean, I, I think I think the big tent would, could be a good idea because we can have like um, like a what's the word I want to use? Um, you know, like an open air market kind of thing on certain days, and they'll drive people down there and use it as opposed to remember they used to do it at Kennedy Park. They still do it at Kennedy Park. <coughs> they do the, the farmers market. The farmers market. Mm -hmm. Still do that there. Yeah. Don't forget, too, you're going to have that Route 79 construction, which is going to make a difference oh. in parking on the Wall Street. Yeah. yeah. It's down there, right? Any, yeah. Anything that you do, a big tent, you just, I think, you know, first of all, you got issues of irrigation and the right. lawn. Uh, secondly, you put a tent up there, you're going to have people congregating under a tent at night. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> So and, and the other thing is to have people who know what they're doing with installing a tent right. as yeah. well. So yeah. I don't the know, idea I, of leaving it up all summer is unrealistic. No, yeah. Yeah. I just think that um, I don't see any validity in doing it in a study. Um, yeah, this is your peer. This is the redevelopment authority's peer. It's not the city's peer. It's not anybody's peer. It's your peer. Well, it, Patty, as tourism well, no, no, director, no, feels like she me. should be right. planning. No, no. Well, first of all, <laughs> it's your peer. Yes, yeah, I know. The redevelopment authority's peer. The redevelopment authority dictates what they want to see occur on that pier. They could take certainly suggestions from other people, but at the end of the day, it's your pier, your liability. You know, I think you should, you know, think about what you want to use that pier for in terms of events and whether or not you want a stage, and that doesn't have to become the city stage. Mm -hmm. Or right. maybe if you're not, if you're only going to do three, two or three lodge concerts, <coughs> Maybe you just rent the stage, yeah. right, exactly. as opposed to buying it, right? Well, let the vendor do it. Just well, right, you know, because the stages are expensive. You know, we're looking at one as one hundred fifty thousand dollars. That's a real nice stage, but it's a big expense. Could you get it through a grant? Maybe, but if you get grant funds for it, then maybe it's worth it. But 
I would just be very cautious as to having, because this is what's going to happen. You're going to have all kinds of people coming to you with various suggestions as to what should and should occur on that pier. But at the end of the day, you know, that you're up here, you got to figure out what you want to do with it. Mm -hmm. And if that's a schedule of events, you do the schedule of events. But, you know, this other stuff, you know, there's the pier is a wide open space. It's a public space. Um, it's a high velocity zone. We know we can't dig into it very deeply. Mm -hmm. So I think we just got to be cautious of that, as John says. Well, the parking's going to be for the next few years. You parking can't park on the Wall Street, right? Right. right? We're working on some parking issues now, but the, but, but you're right. We're probably, there's 87 parking spaces along the Wall Street South, and most of those are going to, if I think all of them are going to be eliminated. So yeah. people Is that are going to like between point that stretch along Point Gloria? Right? From I think from Point Gloria down to the Cove. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so when are they going to be eliminated? Probably at the end of this month. They're already doing quite yeah. a bit. They won't be coming back for a while. So. They, well, they'll probably come back. At, yeah, they probably won't be come back to the end of the project yeah. for the most part. But they'll be, they'll be. You know, I think people, people might actually have to walk. Imagine. They walk the boardwalk. In that, that people will have to walk. <laughs> <laughs> people, it's a yeah. foreign well, concept for people to be able to have to walk. See, yeah. If you can't park, you can't go. Right. For the most part. You well, can you can you can walk. You can, but yeah. it's going to limit the amount of people. Even like a concert. You well, what's that the gamble of walking along with, with a concert? Who's the concert? Yeah, exactly. you know, who's the entertainer? Depends on the draw. I think you almost treat this summer like a pilot. Yes, yeah, like, like a test. test. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's my, my view. To. This is untested. Yep. Yeah. We need to understand what the demands are and what we yeah. need. Right. Maybe, right. maybe what the city should be doing is going after a stage. Right. That's part of the grant. I'm going to suggest yeah. that. Right the, right. the city, if it's a grant. But they can't match it, I guess. Of course you can match it. I'm, I'm not, I'm, that's a, I would well, think. for some reason, they think I think that that the state that the Mott grant has defined that ARPA funds don't qualify as a match. I would highly doubt that. I'd have to see that in writing, <laughs> but that would be very unusual for them to specify that. Yeah. Um, not to say it's not true, but I think you know the city would have more use for a state yeah. to take it different mm -hmm. places. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. And we could borrow it as yeah. opposed yeah. to yeah. Right. a zone again. Uh, I mean, especially again. considering if they do the summer, uh, the concert series, Summer in the Park again, I mean, that right. would be a perfect yeah. venue yeah. for them to use that. Right. What did they use in the past? I thought the city at one time did have a stage. They did. Yeah. They do. They still have a temporary yeah. stage. Yeah. They use yeah. it for um, the Narrows uses it. Right. right. So, for some of their, some of their huh. shows. But when I knew they used to with the downtown, they used to use the city stage. Right. They used to have it on Main Street. Right, right. That goes back a ways. Only pre-COVID. Pre yeah, yeah. pandemic. Yeah, it's yeah. only so like three years. So. Yeah. But now the Narrows just rents them. Maybe they're bigger stages. Maybe okay. they're there for longer right. periods yeah. of time. Right. 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 right, right, right. Yep. But if it's something that's, you know, a hit and run, it, the stage, city stage is probably something. So I, I don't know, I think at this point, I think maybe just using this as a year to figure things out, especially since it's going to be impacted by the construction. Yep. Seems like there's a lot of small things you could do, like even, uh, I know like some of the parks in Boston, they'd have like kite day, mm -hmm. and people would just come and do kites. Yeah, I, thought we were, I thought we were going to do things like food truck festival, yeah. Or yeah. Maybe, right. maybe an art festival. Maybe yeah. Right, but I'm saying there's also like simple things that yeah. don't require right. a lot of infrastructure yeah. or anything. Yeah, you know? yeah and mm -hmm. I think Patty's planning on those. And her view is that <clears throat> all the vendors that she brings for things know to bring pop-up tents that aren't going to blow away. And so she didn't think yeah, they we just, needed Yeah, we just have to make sure everybody knows that they have to use... Barrels. Water barrels or sandbags that they yeah. can't drive right. stakes in. Right. Yeah, I think she said they usually use sandbags. Yeah. Okay, so we're going to pass on that. And I will bring it to the city. You know, are they looking at wanting to buy a tent? I know years ago, I, mean, we were, a, a I think it might have been the same grant, but years ago we tried to put in a, a half shell at the uh, Heritage State Park. Mm -hmm. I remember that. But we couldn't get the city council approval for it. <laughs> But that may be something. Well, why did the it. city council have to approve Heritage State Park? Because it was Art. a city match. Right. Yeah. But it wasn't, I think it's only 25%, so it's not that big an item. I thought it was 50. I think in those days it might okay. be 25%. Yeah. So, uh, Sarah, can we put it like on the calendar for like January next year to think about 
uh -huh. going after this grant yeah. for next yeah. year yeah. or December and we can see how things went this year and yeah. think about what we might want to mm -hmm. request. Okay. Any other uh, peer? Uh, nope. Not issue. So, uh, Sarah, do you want to talk about the Pleasant Street Roadmap? Yeah, I don't really have much new to report. I thought I might when I first planned the agenda, and basically we're just getting more comments back to Emily and going to finalize the roadmap. And um, uh, in Emily's contract, she had defined a somewhat limited number of public meetings and meetings of our citizens' advisory group. So I'm proposing that we now um, hold some without her because we we need her we need to keep her remaining meetings for the big public meetings. So I think now we'll start um, holding our own citizens advisory group meetings because we really need to get back to them and say here's you know here's the final draft of the roadmap and um, I've gotten a couple of calls from members of that group saying, hey, what's happening? And I told them that we'd get everybody back together. <clears throat> so at least the good news is the roadmap is getting done and we'll be moving on to the urban renewal plan and we're still trying to figure out how exactly what our strategy with MEPA is to try to move that forward quickly. So that's that update. Um, just for a point of information, Ron Rusin is on his way. Okay. okay. Thanks. Is he going to knock? Or? I said text me and I'll let him in. <laughs> <laughs> um, downtown Historic District Expansion, Sarah? Yeah, our consultant is working along. I think that's going well. He's keeping himself on schedule, and we should be looking at having public meetings to make sure the community's on board with the plan sometime in the next few months, probably June or so. So that's moving Is he going to be coming back um, in person soon, do you know? Yeah, or? for the yeah. public meetings. But okay. first he has to send the documents he's working on to the Historic Commission, and they have to agree that the proposal um, meets their requirements. They agree that we can just expand the one historic district and that they buy our arguments and don't require that we create two downtown historic districts which is still a potential challenge and we think we're um, that we're being successful to um, convince them that we really just want one downtown historic district and that the history of the buildings justifies that um, so that's what he's really working on right now and when we hear back when he gets all the documents to the Mass Historic Commission and we hear back from them then we'll be ready to do public meetings okay. so that's still a few months off but he'll definitely be coming for those okay <clears throat> are there any more open uh, session issues you guys want to discuss no. okay uh, the chair makes a finding that an open session <clears throat> would have a detrimental effect on negotiating and litigating position of the public body. The purpose of the executive session to is to approve <clears throat> the executive excuse me executive session minutes from January 25th, 2023, and discuss strategy with respect to potential litigation regarding the city pier project and for potential real estate transactions on the agenda, including property on Innovation Way and Duval Street and the potential purchase of a building to be leased. Uh, <clears throat> need a roll call to uh, enter into executive session and not to return to open session. Johnny Erickson, yes. Joni Medeiros, yes. Louis Gonzalez, yes. Ann Keene, yes. 